Now, this was a similar fate for the Ovath family, who couldn't afford their taxes or utility bills as well. Now, nine-year-old Cassandra nominated the cancer ward she had spent time at for a makeover for the show in 2005. According to Desert News, her story inspired the show's producers to renovate their family home in addition to the hospital ward. Now, at the time of filming, the family was actually renting the home they lived in. Her mother told the news at the time we wanted their daughter to know what having a home is. The show's producers managed to buy the home that the family was living in, so they uh, went to the landlord, offered a, a deal, and they bought out the house, which is crazy, so they could transfer ownership to the family. The final makeover transformed the 1,800 square foot rental into a six-bedroom mansion, complete with a movie theater and a backyard carousel. Not a backyard carousel. That actually makes no sense it sounds deranged. It just sounds like such a, an eyesore and also like the upkeep of that, like what if it were to get rusted? It just seems kind of stupid, again, for part of the show and the reaction it would get. The Oakvath family, this could be our coolest project ever. These guys sent us a tape, but they don't want us to renovate their house. What do they want? Well, it's a little different. Take a look at this tape, you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh. We're the Oakvath family. family. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Nikki. I'm Cassandra and I'm Amy. Come inside, we'll tell you our story. So Brian and Nicole Ovath had a happy family, man. Five kids and another one on the way. Then something really terrible happened. Their oldest daughter, Cassandra- It's so interesting to me how all these families have so many children. I feel like that's not as common nowadays, is it? Are people still having like five, six kids? If you're part of a family, comment below how many siblings do you have? I have two siblings, so we're three. But like five kids, another one coming. It just sounds like a lot. Andrew was diagnosed with cancer. This is an eight-year-old girl who's been through a lot. The minute they told me it was neuroblastoma, I just, my heart fell. I have neuroblastoma stage three. They showed me those CAT scan pictures, and I never will ever forget the face on the doctor. She said, your daughter has a tumor. I mean, that is a heartbreaking story. Of course, they want to help them out. Although the family didn't need to make home payments, the utility bills and property taxes soon became too great for their family. The monthly utility bill for the house jumped from 500 to 1,200, and the property taxes quintupled? went tripled, so five times more. In 2008, the house went into foreclosure and the family had to sell two of their vehicles to cancel the auction sale. They ended up putting their house up for sale, lowering it from the asking price of $1.8 to 800000 then selling it for $540,000. It actually turns out that the family split up in 2010. So it seems like there was a lot of turmoil and um, yeah, unfortunately a lot of kids too for them to deal with. So now they need two houses for the kids to back and forth and stay at. So, and five of them too. That's something I found really fascinating about this series. Was there any point where these executives or these producers considered what the property taxes would be on these homes after the fact? I mean, in my opinion, it's clear that the people who are participating in this were not made aware of what they're getting into. Like the Nicholas family, they had mortgage problems. After the death of her husband, Arlene won a home makeover for her and her three sons. Her late husband, Tim, just passed away after a seven-year fight with hepatitis C, which he had thought to have contracted while working as a nurse. So I guess accidentally a needle had punctured him and he had caught it. So I think a lot of times hepatitis can come from various things, like typically like needles, like maybe like drug use and things like this, but he got it like on the job working, which is really unfortunate. The crew rebuilt the family home, hoping to give her a brand new start free of charge. But reports say that state and banking officials reduced the home's mortgage from $140,000 to $30,000, which significantly lowered the interest rate as well. But after the makeover, the home's annual taxes increased from $2,000 to $7,500 in a year. Now, a car accident in 2010 set Arlene back, making it more difficult for her to make her mortgage payments. So from then on, she just never could catch up on her bills. So by 2017, the house had been foreclosed on. In an interview with the Lansing State Journal, Arlene told reporters that she had planned to build a memorial garden for Tim and open up a camp for grieving children. After her community came together to build her a dream house, Arlene wanted to find a way to show her appreciation. She said, I feel bad because so many people came together for us. I know I shouldn't feel like I let them down, but I do. I know that ABC was not happy that this family caught up with the news to announce what had been happening, but here's a clip of what Arlene's situation became. Her dream home has become a nightmare. We've been evicted. 
We were there as she scrambled to pack her furniture and personal belongings out of the 3,200 square foot house in Holt, Michigan. A moving van was parked out front as the family scrambles to gather all that they can. The sheriff could show up at any moment right now and we would have to leave whatever's left behind. And unfortunately, I haven't even had a chance. Look how sad she is. I mean, this should be like part of the campaign for, or like a, a disclosure video. If you were to get onto the show, this may be you. To go through everything. It just took, you know, a few unexpected emergencies. I got behind and I reached out and tried to work with the mortgage company and my efforts were just kind of shoved under the carpet. The next thing she knew, an eviction notice came in the mail. I asked the judge if there was anything that could stop this, and he said no. And I said, not even health reasons, nothing. And he said, no, I have to go. I don't know where we're gonna go or where we're gonna end up. That is so sad, and that house is ridiculous. It's huge, it's beautiful, it looks amazing. It's actually kind of bizarre to see someone like her in that situation in a home like that because it doesn't make sense. Now look at this guy, he looks stressed out. The Herberts family's bills tripled after their makeover. Eric Herbert had his home renovated after becoming the caretaker of his late sister's twins. Unfortunately, after appearing on the show, the full-time construction worker began to feel overwhelmed by the increased bills generated by the new three-bedroom, three-and-a-half bathroom house. The utility bills reportedly tripled after the family of three moved in. A little over three years later, after the show built the house, the Herberts were forced to leave after defaulting on payments. After the show aired, Eric's employer closed shop and he lost his job. In an interview with 4 News Now, Eric explained that he attempted and failed to start a business, which only worsened his financial situation. He was quoted saying, I mean, the biggest thing was having to tell my kids that they lost their house. Regarding the selling of his house, Herbert told the news, I'm doing it not to lose money. I just hope people understand the reality of it. When Eric Hebert and his twin niece and nephew first walked through through the door of this extreme makeover home. Never did Eric imagine. Wait, look at this house. Why do they make them so extra looking? That he'd be forced to leave three and a half years later. Piece by piece, everything kind of started falling apart. The money was going out faster than it was coming in. The biggest mistake I think that I made was I took too much money out on the house thinking that I was going to have a job. The rest of the money went back into maintaining the home. Eric says the mortgage and bills add up to $3,000 a month. He now owes Wells Fargo almost $400,000. Without a steady job, he had wait 400,000 i feel like eric you're maybe doing a little bit more shopping than just spending your money on this home hasn't been able to pay his mortgage for six months the house has been up for sale for almost a year without any luck when all that crumbles i mean you feel like a failure to either rent a place around here or find some other place to live also back to the point i made earlier i think it's really bizarre when they build these mansions in neighborhoods where the other homes don't belong so i think that really hinders the selling value Thank you for watching this clip from the Let's Get Into It podcast. To view the full episode, visit the link listed below.